Hi friends, welcome back to Sheena's Homestead. Today we are going to talk about peaches. Peaches. We have our big tree up here in the front of our yard and unfortunately we got a lot of damage to this tree this year. Um, quite a few branches broke during all the tornadoes that we had and uh, wind storms and stuff. And as you know, peach trees are more fragile than other trees. Um, so this one did really well with its fruit, but unfortunately too much fruit broke the branch and that's a lesson that I have learned. Um, definitely something I am going to write down in my journal and make sure that I remember for next year, not to let too much fruit grow on one branch. Um, at the time it looked great and I thought that it could sustain all that was growing, but it turns out it could not. So anyway, we did leave some of the broken branches up um, and tried to support them as best we could so that the peaches that were on them could still ripen and we did it. Um, they did actually ripen and now here we are and it's harvest time. So as you can see, this branch broke um, and the one next to it is doing okay, but it's going to need some support. And fortunately, this branch is kind of bending over onto um, our pine tree that we have here. So that's gotten some good support. And on this side, I'll take you over here. Um, you remember when I showed you this broke in our... Um, tornado that we had and actually we have to tighten this up a little bit right like that um, to make sure that this one is supported in any windstorms that come our way so you can see how many peaches are still on the tree they keep falling we have a couple that have gotten eaten um, and these are some of the branches that Rob's dad with Tried to help support along with our ties here. I think that they are going to be just fine for the rest of the season. But yeah, we have some more peaches to pick. You want to grab some, Lil? Yeah. Two more. <laughs> Let's find another. So. This one, I think I'm going to leave just a little bit longer. They kind of come off really easily if they're ready. Oh, that one's still hanging on there. You want to try this one? Oh yeah, that was nice and easy. <laughs> and we have this peach tree too. And the amazing thing about this one is it is about seven or eight years old. And it has never had fruit on it before. Not one single peach. And this year was the year. Wow. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Whoop, that one just came right off, so must be ready. Oh, it looks delicious. Look at all those freckle sunspots. <laughs> They're sunspots. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. So we are lucky this one has quite a few. I do feel like the drought um, affected the taste of these peaches. They're not quite as sweet as the ones in the back um, because I didn't get to water these the same way I watered in the back. But I'm definitely not going to complain because it is such a blessing to have this much fruit on any one tree, um, but especially peaches. Does it come off easily? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that one's got some sap on it. That's okay. We can still eat it. Uh huh. Perfect. It's a cute peach. <laughs> So another thing I've learned about peaches is that you want to have a nice open center um, when you are growing and pruning them. And I did do that with this tree, um, as you can see. The center is nice and open, which allows a lot of airflow around the tree. So each branch is like individually its own, and that allows for a lot of abundant fruit. 
Um, so that part we did right, <laughs> but I think that there was just, I mean, conditions were dry this year and we had some bad weather. So it just is what it is, but I am glad that we finally got this roped up and supported well. So another thing I want to talk to you about more in depth is my flower garden. Um, I have quite a few little spots this year where I planted flowers and I planted a lot in the front as well. Um, flowers are just something that are very easy and can make you so happy. Um, the first time I planted a cutting flower garden was last year and that was zinnias um, and it was wildly successful. Something I will do every year for the rest of my life, I can promise you that. Um, very easy to do. Zinnias are amazing. They um, just keep, they, they're cutting flowers so they want to be cut. They want you to keep harvesting off of them and they will just keep putting more and more shoots out there, um, more blooms, and they just become more amazing uh, the more that you harvest. So they're such a great flower to give to friends and family, um, and you can just go grab them on a whim. But uh, let me show you. So I have different varieties of zinnias in here. These ones are a smaller variety. I will link down below where I got those. And then this is a different one. This is um, a California King and it puts out flowers nice and big like this one. Just beautiful and amazing. So you can see on this flower here, so I've let this one go a little too long, um, but if I were to cut it right here it will put out another shoot. I forgot my scissors, so I'll just cut that in a second. It'll put out this shoot and more. You can see down here. Oh, I did cut this one. And look, it did grow. It grew the flower that we are taking now and a new one. So that's how this works. It's quite amazing. You just keep on harvesting and it'll give you more. Here's another example. So I cut the flower in the middle and it put out two new shoots. And then another variety of flower that I am currently growing is a Cosmo. And these are such a light, delicate flower. Oh, they're just, they dance in the wind. They are absolutely beautiful. And they grow for a very long time. They just keep re reproducing themselves. And there isn't much you have to do with them. And they come in all different colors. You can see I have white and a pinky purple. And these are some beautiful orange ones here. And while they are an annual flower, they will continuously replant themselves. So these, I didn't plant any seeds for this year. They just came up again from last year. Oh, look at that one, just gorgeous. It's amazing how much wildlife um, gravitates towards flowers. You can sit here all day long and watch bees come by. Um, honeybees and bumblebees love the flowers the most. I oftentimes find them sleeping inside the flower. Um, I'll see if I can find any. It's, it's afternoon right now, so I, I highly doubt that I will find. Um, one at this moment, but when I come out here in the evening after dinner, um, I almost always find a little something sleeping in my flowers. Um, of course the bunnies love the flowers too, which can kind of be a problem. Um, but you know, we have to share our space with everybody. And uh, let me show you this little set of gardens. Now these here are mostly the California Giant and you can see how tall they're getting and they just have so many blooms. Got some more over here. The 
grass started to take over this garden bed before I could really get to it. So we've got some grass in there too, but that's okay. The flowers are still beautiful. It's fun to watch hummingbirds come and drink from them and butterflies. This section over here is a lot more wild and it actually provides a really good backdrop to my photos. So I usually take photos down this way and these beautiful white fluffy clouds of flowers um, will be kind of a nice backdrop, a little blur to the, the background and add some color in there too but I love how they dance in the wind as well. For very little money, you can really give yourself a nice, private and peaceful experience. Um, flowers add so much joy to so many things and I've had my neighbors even stop by and say, wow, that's so beautiful. I'm so glad you did that. And then guess what? The next year, they have one too. <laughs> so spread the love. This flower here is considered a weed by most, but not to me. <laughs> it is Queen Anne's Lace. And it is so beautiful. I believe the story goes, there's a red dot right in the center. And they say that's like a drop of blood <laughs> from Queen Anne sewing her lace. Um, so I don't know if that story is true or if you have heard that before, but I remember um, learning that from the Arboretum when I was a kid and it stuck with me. So you can see right there that little drop of pink, reddish pink. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard that before yourself. So another place that I like to plant flowers is up near my house, obviously. Um, that's where most people do plant their flowers. But let me show you. I have quite a few hydrangeas and these are all done now, but they were purple cone flowers. Here I still have some. Right here. Some are still blooming. Um, Echinacea and purple coneflowers are one in the same, um, but coneflowers come in all different colors. In fact, these were orange and yellow, and these are black-eyed Susans. Um, the best part about purple coneflowers and echinacea is that they come back every year. They are a perennial, and they often spread themselves. I think we started with maybe four plants and you can see just how many we have. <laughs> now I have to come through here and cut off all of the dead ones um, before next year, but I just wanted to show you that you can plant those for your own house. And then I planted some zinnia as well up here and it's been doing great. So I think that's something I'm going to add in the future. The little Kelly Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> so then up here I decided to plant some zinnia seeds as well and I love how it turned out. They just kind of line my path here and they are blooming after our echinacea so it gives us another pretty thing to look at. So I'm going to show you this because it's a prime example of why your flowers should be cut. So we have this beautiful one right here. And it has two sisters <laughs> that are coming down the pipeline wanting to bloom as well. And in order to help that bloom, we want to clip the middle one just like that. And these will now grow and flower a lot quicker. And we have this one to enjoy for ourselves. 
so as you can see I have quite a few blossoms that are ready to bloom and that is simply because I keep cutting <laughs> so they will get bushier it's just it's a lot like basil in the way that you the more you prune it the more you'll get a very rare hummingbird moth. I hope you can see it. It is about an inch long. Look at that. So this zinnia is a great example of how one stem can grow to be so bushy. And look how many flowers are about to bloom from it. Thank you so much for coming along with us today, friends. It was a great day. We have zinnias and peaches. I mean, there's no better combination than that. I really, really encourage you to pick up some seeds, even if you pick them up this year and hold on to them until next year, at least get them and have them and look forward to it all winter. Plan out your garden, sketch it out on a notebook, or whatever, wherever, and just start getting ideas out there because this has brought me so much happiness and Liliana too, and all our friends and neighbors, we get to share in the delight of such a beautiful bouquet. Um, so I hope you guys have a great week and thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, like, comment, share me with a friend and subscribe. I really appreciate each and every one of you Thank you for being you, and I will see you again next time on Sheena's Homestead. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>